Galnet News Digest, 1st of August 3305. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, Refugee Palin opens corner shop. Aegis appeals for goodwill repairs. Cultural appropriation as Alliance invades Lave. Thargoids stole my nameplates. Refugee Palin opens corner shop. <music> Professor Ishmael Palin's engineering workshop is open for business at his new location at Able Laboratory in the ARC system. Refugee Palin was put in temporary accommodation aboard the megaship Carson Spring on July the 18th after he claimed that he was unable to continue living in the war zone in the Maya system in the face of constant harassment by Thargoid scouts. The professor, who had previously survived a lengthy blockade put in place by his former employer, the Federation, applied for asylum not in the first system he reached on returning to the bubble, but instead he continued to the wealthy ARC system before putting in his claim, leading to some suspicion that he may in fact be a bogus asylum seeker, coming over to the Alliance to take the jobs of genuine Alliance citizens, and simultaneously to sponge off the bountiful Alliance welfare system. The Able Laboratory Council has allocated Palin a lock-up workshop and basic accommodation within the settlement at nominal rent, and is resolute about Palin's right to stay within the Alliance as a refugee. A spokesperson for the Council is reported as saying that even if he is an economic migrant, Palin's engineering masterpieces are in high demand, with his Grade 5 dirty drives a favourite with commanders, and that this rare talent will encourage visitors to the otherwise somewhat sleepy settlement. Nonetheless, there remains a deep suspicion amongst some residents in the settlement about Palin's plans to continue experimenting with Thargoid-sourced meta-alloys, and a Send Him Back campaign has been established, claiming that if Bill Turner can engineer Grade 3 shielded fuel scoops, why would anyone want enhanced performance thrusters with Grade 5 dirty drive modifications from Palin? They also feel that if Palin really cares about the Pleiades, he should go home and fight the Thargoids off with his bare hands. The megaship Carson Spring, which had been Palin's temporary home, has returned to the Pleiades to collect more refugees, partly for humanitarian reasons, but mainly to wind up the members of the Send Him Back campaign. Aegis appeals for goodwill repairs. The war to drive the Thargoids out of the Witch Head Nebula appears to have been won, but with massive damage to human infrastructure. The Federation, Empire and Alliance all responded to Aegis's call to invade the area occupied by the Thargoids and their barnacles in the Witch Head Nebula back on July the 11th. The stations the powers installed were attacked and damaged, but as a result of large numbers of anti-Thargoid patrols by independent pilots, the Thargoid fleet seems to have been eliminated, with little or no Thargoid activity reported this morning. This leaves the powers with two badly damaged stations each. In order to efficiently harvest the fruits of the Thargoids' barnacles, these damaged stations must be repaired. Professor Alba Tesro of Aegis has made an appeal for pilots to support the repairs, but says that neither Aegis nor any of the powers have the finances to fund the repair effort. The combined total tonnage of materials needed to repair the starports is close to 1,800,000 tonnes. That's a lot of work for long-distance truckers. And given that the Alliance has an undamaged and completely serviceable surface base, in which head sector LC-V C2-10, you might wonder why anyone would bother. Especially when the evil Don Antonacci will be taking his cut off everything that's delivered. Cultural Appropriation 
as Alliance invades Lave. The Alliance politicians in Alioth continue to cast envious eyes on the independent Lave system, and in their latest devious move seem intent on parading the cultural wealth of the Alliance in front of the people of Lave. In a statement seemingly designed to stoke controversy, Prime Minister Edmund Mahon announced that the Festival of Cultures would showcase the very best of Alliance achievements, entertainment and history as it travelled through seven Alliance systems, the first of which Alliance systems is, presumably, Lave. And the Fine Art Emporium has been taken over by all sorts of Alliance culture, with exhibits including cheese, brewer's yeast, and thrush, as well as a selection of modern interpretations of the lost masterpiece Pennant Street by Megan Madigan, willingly contributed according to the Alliance Press handout by many of Lave's finest artists. There's been some speculation whether the winking cat crew may put in an appearance to purloin some of these amateur daubs and replace them with their own signature street art. Also featured in the exhibition is the marble sculpture of Venus de Antonacci with the big boobies, a long and tedious hollow novel called Flanagan's Awake, and as Commander Factabulous correctly anticipated, an enormous wooden horse. In the remaining six weeks of the cultural tour of Alliance Systems, the Festival of Cultures will be visiting a number of other high-profile systems, including Achenar, and Saul. Thargoids stole my nameplates. Many commanders were distraught today when they suddenly and without warning lost the ability to name their ships. Nor were they able to buy any of those fancy looking nameplates. Whenever they entered the store, the shopkeeper denied all knowledge of ship nameplates and asked, if they'd like to buy a decal instead. The Pilots' Federation has issued a brief and non-committal statement, saying that it hoped that the ability to name ships would be restored soon. However, the Society of Tinfoil Hatchery has a convincing explanation. The Thargoids did it. What better way is there to demoralise a humanity that fights wars just to get a decal that's a picture of a crustite Thargoid interceptor, than to deny them their shiny cosmetic items. How much longer can humanity defend its bridgehead in the Witchhead Nebula if it can't call its ship Crate Expectations? The psychological war has begun. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to.